Whew. I'm a bit tired tonight. Gonna go to sleep soon. And the old tuna, I forgot to throw it away. Ah! Uh, but I don't think I'm eating tuna again. Ah, oh, my god, that. Just to follow up on what I was saying uh, in the last video, uh, what's this? Uh, stuff from college or whatever. Um, you know, uh, my my main point was that the the external stimuli that you get, okay, is really emotionally neutral. We create uh, the distinctions in reality, and pretty much everything that we know about the world around us. It, it, it's not that we are trying to understand reality, it's that we are in the process of trying to understand reality, we are creating our own reality based on whatever information we can get about the reality around us and we are making distinctions not in reality but in our own interpretation of reality. That is where the distinctions are made. The distinction between uh, a, a tree and uh, its roots or its branches uh, are really a distinction of, of words. It, it's the reality that we have created for ourselves. In our created reality there is a distinction. You know, you have the tree and you have uh, the branches and the leaves. But if you go in nature and you look hard enough there is not a specific point that you can there is not a specific line at any point that can define exactly where the tree stops and where the branch begins you know if you were to zoom in on this with a microscope you know you can see where my finger ends and when the little wooden thingy starts but if you look and you enlarge it to molecular level the the further you go the more difficult it becomes and at some point become you you realize that it's impossible to draw a line specifically exactly where one ends and when the other begins and when it comes to emotions it's, it's the same thing when we see something that's beautiful like a, a painting you know uh, the, you know, the, the, the Joconda, for example, uh, you say it's beautiful, but there is nothing in, in the structure materially that makes it beautiful. We simply call it beautiful. You know, Kant was saying, uh, by, you know, obtaining objectivity, the only way to get objectivity is through a network of intersubjectivity. You know, you say, well, if enough people say that the thing is, looks good, I don't want to put everything here because I'm going to have to cook my breakfast here in the morning. So I'm going to find a way to transfer things from here to the garbage bag without going through here. So it, um, well, it's kind of a. Well, this one's broken, so I'm going to throw it away. Anyway, um, and the, the thing is that if enough people say that uh, the painting is beautiful, it creates this agreement, this intersubjectivity and that becomes a reality to which you can compare a claim so when you say something in order for the thing you say to be true or false it has to be compared and lined up against reality to see if it corresponds right and so this idea is that the reality that you compare the claim against is this intersubjectivity is the agreement and so uh, our interpretation of reality replaces reality and the point I was making uh, in the other video when I was talking about happiness is that what you see around you has no emotion. There, there is no emotion in the you know, bananas or whatever. The emotion is created inside of you. The positive and negative uh, aspect of reality is created inside of you. Uh, when you see something that makes you sad it's because inside of you there is something that triggers the sadness when you see that that thing and that is why 
um, old bedside alarm. I don't know what that brown thing is. Probably some coke that got stuck in there, and then some little crumbs of bread that accumulated, you know, over the years. And yeah, yeah. Man, I hate cleaning up. Um, and um, you, um, so you you have this control over your own personal interpretation of things around you and decide whether you want them to please you or not and it takes a long time to be able to rewire your brain to think like that because you're basically giving power to your consciousness over things that normally you wouldn't have it's as if you know you got the executive government uh, saying that it wants power over, you know, uh, uh, Congress or over the judiciary. That's what is going on in, in your brain in, in, in one way. You want uh, to yourself consciously be able uh, to reach this feeling of happiness without the interference of an outside, an external stimuli that uh, makes it so that um, uh, that you react with happiness to, to something and um, it, it takes years years of training and uh, at some point you really start to see a progress you really start to realize that you know there is no you that is sad because there is no you in the first place you are not what people say you are. People define you by all kinds of things, by your personality, by the clothes you wear, whether the place you live, the language you speak. And these are simply, uh, uh, how can I say, um, forms, not substance. They are expressions of, of actions they are not the reality that forms you and that means you are simply the difference between what makes you and what you know makes you say 20 years ago the physical matter that composed your body back then is probably all gone. There's probably very little, if any, of, of that, of the, the, the cells and, you know, and the matter that composed your body back then as there is still now. But in a way, even if physically it's almost not the same body, you can still say that it's, you're still you. You're still the same person. And inside that when you see that your emotions are simply something that comes from the inside and they are triggered by outside stimuli they are not caused or created by an outside stimuli they are simply triggered by it then you think why can't I have the same reaction why can't I control the same reaction within myself without needing uh, whichever thing that make me happy why do I must I depend on basically chance why must I depend on hearing something happy in order to make me happy why must I depend on you know having something good happen in order for me to, to, to be happy and um, you know, one of the biggest sources of sadness is that people, they just can't get enough. You know, they, 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 they have something, you know, they, they want to have something and then they get it and they have, they, they're happy. Yay, I, I got this, you know, the kid just got his PlayStation and he's happy. Yay, I got my PlayStation. But then all of a sudden he's sad again. 
And the problem is that he is sad not, in, in the first place, he was sad not because he wanted to have a PlayStation. He was sad because he wanted to have something he didn't have. And just giving him a PlayStation just doesn't fix the fundamental sadness. It simply, you know, covered up with, with you know, a fake, uh, a fake uh, remedy. The, the, you have to understand that just obtaining what you wish to obtain materially is not what, what will relieve your sadness. Because your sadness comes from the fact that you desire something you don't have. And that's what you have to eliminate in order to eliminate sadness. Anyway, so I'll see you guys later, huh?